Good day again, viewers, and welcome to the program Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today with me, or with us, is Mr. Barrymore Felicier, who is our permanent secretary in the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. Good day, viewers. Mr. P.S., you seem to like a lot of challenges because you just came from a ministry which is of course very challenging the ministry of infrastructure and then you came into, into hot waters which is the department of agriculture <laughs> which is very dynamic so i just i, just, I don't know it, it seems like challenges sir. <laughs> the, my stint at agriculture has been has been very interesting i do love a challenge indeed and uh, I'm just looking forward to what the future holds. Definitely, definitely. Well, I would like to welcome you again. Thank uh, you. It has been what since what since um, Oct October last year, November, November last year. Yes. All right. So welcome again to the to the Department of so Agriculture, much. and I wish your stint will be a very successful one. And of course, I, I know with the uh, the stuff that we have that are very cooperative will give you all the assistance to ensure that our program and projects are will obtain the objectives. They've been doing that so far. Definitely. Give us an overview, since you've been there, of um, our program for, for, for this coming year. Okay. The Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives, we are involved in setting the policy and strategic direction for that sector. We are involved in ensuring that there are sustainable livelihoods, poverty reduction, agricultural diversification, mm -hmm. good governance when it comes to land tenure, that is important in agriculture. We are also involved in creating some degree of employment, ensuring that production and supply in agricultural and non-agricultural food crops are, are sustained. We ensured in ensuring that there is a market for that supply, linkages between production, uh, distribution, and markets. Mm -hmm. We are also involved in ensuring that the sector, there is economic growth in the sector and the future looks prosperous for, for agriculture. Our role also encompasses, you see the department does a lot, it encompasses some form of environmental protection yes. um, and some form of, of building resilience and adapting to climate change. So in a nutshell, that is, that is what we do. But in 2019, we are seeking to look at agricultural diversification, um, reduction in the food import bill, which is important. Our food import bill is about 64 million when it comes to production and imports of, of fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So we're seeking to re reduce the food import bill. We're seeking to strengthen the legislation as it um, pertains to sanitary and phytosanitary legislation, mm -hmm. that is the standards so that our farmers can meet the standards, the export standards and, and supply regional and international markets. We are seeking to develop land banks, a national land bank, to ensure that farmers who don't have land can have access to lands and increase acreage in, in those fruits and vegetables we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We are also seeking to strengthen the fisheries sector through the development of an aquaculture management plan. So a focus on fisheries. In forestry, we see the, the development of the, the wildlife conservation and education center. We're looking to see how we can enjoy the conservation of the threatened parrot. Mm -hmm. in, in this instance, the Amazon of Osicola. You would have known that with Maria, um, due to the possible near extinction of the, the Dominican parrot. So yes. we're looking to see how we can, we can do these things. We're also looking to see how we can improve on the exports of CMOS and cocoa this year. Uh, we see some growth in those areas and yes. some potential in those areas. So CMOS and cocoa, these are areas that we're looking, looking to strengthen. We have asked the Department of Finance to possibly fund the citrus greening program which is, which is a, a disease that affects citrus. Yes. So after eight years, those, those plants unfortunately die. So we're looking to see how we, we can ensure that we don't import citrus. So citrus greening is, is high on the cards for us. And we are also looking somewhere, a big, big ticket item, to see how we structure 
the, the St. Lucia Fish Marketing Corporation and the St. Lucia Marketing Board. So these are among the things that we have on the agenda for 2019. So that's, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot in the place, Mr. P.S. Yes. Okay, let's start with the hot one first. The I think um, yes, I think it's pretty hot and it needs some explanation. And people are you know, still curious as to why um, the restructuring of marketing board and fish marketing cooperation. Okay. So I think you can give an overview, give a little background and then exactly what's moving forward. No. When I entered in November, mid-November 2019, this this program or project or this restructuring was already in, was in place. Mm -hmm. There were already discussions that had preceded me for in excess of one year. There was a development of a business plan created by a consultant, Dr. Scott, mm -hmm. in which they examined the performance of the marketing board and the fisheries corporation over the last 10 years plus. Mm -hmm. The marketing board is a creature of statute and it was created in 1964 thereabout. And the St. Lucia Fisheries Corporation is, is a public company incorporated in 1984 thereabout. These, these companies for the past 10 years or more, have not, they have not made profits. They have not been performing financially. In the case of St. Lucia Marketing Board, the last time they were able to break even and, and make profits or, or pay their own bills, that was somewhere in 2006. Wow. From 2011 to 2013, um, 18, sorry, the government has spent about $16 million try, be, trying to bail out the fish marketing wow. corporation. Wow. So the, the performance has been dismal. So ev every year, the government keeps injecting funds into a structure or, or to these two agencies that are not performing well. Okay. So there is a need, and during the consultations, uh, we have spoken to the fisheries, um, cooperatives, the farmers' cooperatives, the members of the board, the, the trade unions, and they all agreed that something needs to be done mm -hmm. and some form of restructuring needs to take place. Uh, what, what there is not consensus on, on some parties is whether, whether government should retain majority ownership or it should be fully privatized. But coming out of the consultations, the best vehicle for those entities performing in the future, it was deemed privatization would be the best form or structure that would allow these entities the full autonomy they need to become viable in the future. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is essentially why the, these two entities are being restructured. If they have not performed as public entities over the last three to four decades, there, there doesn't seem to be a strong justification to keep them going as public entities. Correct. There needs to be a fresh perspective fresh view, fresh management style, an injection of some form of, of private or business entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So that social responsibility, I think that should be out of the window now because of all the other um, marketing formula around it over those years. So it's, it's, uh, it's challenging for them. Yes, so the government still wants to retain some form of oversight yes. of, on those entities. We are cognizant of our responsibility when it comes to food security. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so therefore, the government will retain oversight, some form of oversight over those, those entities to ensure that the stakeholders receive the benefits that they should, so that the fishers, the fishers have a market and they have gainful employment, the farmers have a market and they have gainful employment. But it was supposed to have been, a, the, the understanding is a PPP, right? It, it was supposed to be a joint venture, um, private, public-private partnership. Yes. Yes. So that, that's, that is going forward? That is going forward with particularly the, the, marketing, the marketing board. board. Mm -hmm. And there is supposed to be some degree of, of, of almost full privatization with the fish marketing. fish marketing corporation. corporation. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we, we, the farmers and fishers need to know that they still uh, have some livelihood. They are still protected. They can still sell the fish. But yes. again, it has to be business. It has to be business. Right. As it is now, the, the, the market for fish is fragmented, small. You have persons selling fish in, in various mm -hmm. quarters mm -hmm. and, and segments. So what you want to do is, is strengthen that market, centralize it, provide them with the means to export if necessary, yes. and supply the, the large restaurants, and hotels, hotels and, and supermarkets. Great. We are due for our first break. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. Family time is a healthy time, and a healthy family eats smart. 
Local fish and seafood from fishermen and farmers that you trust with your family's health is always fresh. Choose fresh seafood because it's packed with nutrients. St. Lucia's fish and seafood producers meet every government standard for health and safety, high quality, fresh local food products straight from the fisherman to you. Choose St. Lucian Fish and Seafood at your local grocers and choose a healthy lifestyle for your entire family. I use fresh local fish right there from the fisheries department. Eat fresh, buy local. St. Lucia's fishermen produce an abundance of fresh foods, highly nutritious and incredibly tasty. Together when it's most important. Healthy families, buy fresh, eat fresh. Yeah, welcome back to the program. Um, Mr. P.S., you mentioned livelihoods, which is very good. It's, I think, the area that we need to strengthen. Um, and livelihoods is across the board. Uh, you're mm -hmm. talking about um, agroforest fo and all the, the derivatives from the forest that can be used to, to, to um, add value. Uh, so we're lo looking at agro-processing also. We're looking at the fish, again, fish processing, all this. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we, we need to move on. I mean, it's not, it's not um, con la coutine, you know. And let's look, we'll look at agro-processing. Where is the ministry at this juncture? I don't know if you recall our um, uh, World Food Day activity last year. We yeah. focused on agro-processing and um, you know St. Lucians who came out to view uh, the exhibition were impressed with what they saw. Um, I don't think they knew that St. Lucians are producing so much stuff you know so we need to now look at where do we go from here. Right. So the, the World Food Day activity was indeed an eye-opener for, for many St. Lucians. The variety of products on display and being produced is amazing. What we need to do is now expand on those quantities and penetrate new markets. For that, we need HACCP certification. Mm -hmm. We need to ensure that those persons in those cottage industries, they are HACCP certified. Mm -hmm. we, we continue to support those small, small and rural communities, especially communities such as Urge, mm -hmm. Urge where we due on the 24th of February to sign a lease with the Urge Rural Women's Community to produce cocoa. They'll be producing chocolate from cocoa and that facility is, is uh, almost a brand new facility that will be handed over to them to ensure that they have some form of sustainable livelihood. But these women are doing amazingly well. We do also have the Foasso processing plant yes. that, that we, we have handed over to, to Mr. Emmanuel where he produces the, the juices, the smoothies, the chocolates, uh, chocolates mm -hmm. etc. So that once again, agro-processing is high on the, on the menu for us. Within the cocoa and seamoss sector, we want to encourage, especially those persons on that, that East Coast belt, mm -hmm. to enter into that, the CMOS, the CMOS. And we want to, once the financing permits, provide them with the training and the equipment uh, to get them certified so that we can export, export um, CMOS, mm -hmm. CMOS and cocoa. So agro-processing, we, we're looking to do well and we, we're hoping to model what happens in Urge, what has happened in Urge, mm -hmm. and what has happened in Foasso. And, and ensure that, that that type of value added moves forward. And we want to instill that value added. In the case of, if I may return to the St. Lucia Marketing Board, you want to, you want to now move from that production of, of raw, raw material or raw produce. So just from selling street watermelons, tomatoes, mm -hmm. and you start adding value, you start packaging, Correct. and you start branding, and you start singing out. Mm -hmm. So that is what we want to do in terms of that. Yeah, man, definitely. I think that's the way to go now. Yes. And again, the other thing, we, we need to really um, excite young blood into agriculture. Yes. And that takes me to the Youth Agri Entrepreneurship Program. Um, I know there were many challenges. Where is it now? That program, the phase one of that program, has been completed as of December 31st, 2018. We inducted about 75 young farmers and ended up with 70, which is not, the attrition rate is not that high. Mm -hmm. 70 persons completed the program, so they would have received the benefit of having land, inputs, and technical assistance into, into producing their, their own farming, farming products and mm -hmm. produce and, and um, being able to sell to agencies such as marketing board and other small entities. Mm -hmm. So that is very successful, 70 persons graduating, if I may say graduating from that program. We're looking forward to financing phase two where we see a possible 75 young and new farmers entering the program and repeating that, 
that type of experience. Great. So, so moving forward, um, any young person coming in now who wanting to you know follow the program, that program, that program is no more. There's no. I remember there was a second phase to that yes. program. It's no more. The, the second phase is still on the cards. It's not, it has not been financed as yet. But once we are able to get the financing, we want to push ahead because our target has always been 150 yes. young persons. Yes. That's our target. Yes. Yes. We, have, we have somewhat half the target. So we want to ensure that we achieve that. We really need, when you look at the farmer profile, they are aging, the farmers are aging, yeah, are. aging farmers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we definitely need young blood into mm -hmm, the industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, need, we need persons who embrace the technology. Definitely. So that is what we want to do. We yeah. want to ensure that, that, that these livelihoods, that mm -hmm. farming continues, that we are able to supply our own food. And we, we can see it happening eh, because the number mm -hmm. of young persons who are involved using the new technology, um, using look at going into aquaponics. I aquaponics. mean, Mr. Alphonse Dong Dong in Boadien and yes. he's doing very, he's a young guy, he's doing mm -hmm. very, very well. Uh, so we need to, you know, infuse, you know, um, those new technology. There is, I think, the two new guys um, in Babuno who are going into greenhouses, greenhouses. fully automated, yes. you know, controlled by, by an app from the phones, yes. you know, so that's the way I think we need to go. That's exactly. So we want persons who can embrace the technology. Yes. Um, so that would make farming farming a lot Exciting. Easy, a lot e a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you if the technology is supposed to make it cheaper yes. in the long in the yes. long run yes. cheaper. Yes. 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 Um, production. You you are able now, as you said, with the greenhouses, you can control your your yield, irrigation, your maturity, yes, your yes, irrigation. Yes, yes, so yes, you can also, yes. you can schedule when you take to market. Yes. It makes it a lot easier yeah. to farm with the embracing of the technology. People are saying, now what you need to do is so sexy up agriculture. <laughs> 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 which, is, which is, you know, that the, way, the way you need to go. Yeah. Um, let's look at, for example, Beau I know there is the movement of Beau of, um, of course, from Beau to Volet. To Volet. Um, the Isba project, I don't know where is that now, because the, I know before that, the card um, on, on the table into, for, for movement, um, there was an IPSA project. Where is that? Where, where is this? So give the, us the whole shebang. The, the relocation of Boseju. Mm -hmm. Right now, we still, with the, most of the equipment and the, the, the items stored at Boseju is still at Boseju. What we are now looking at, we have identified the area in Volet. We are finalizing the drawings, the costings, and seeking the financing for the relocation of Volet. What we want to do is, is to relocate staff from Borsejou. We had already identified some space in Viewfort, but that, that seems to have um, disappeared somehow. We need to identify some other uh, alternative space and then facilitate that relocation. So that relocation, we are going to be submitting updated financials to the, to the Office of Budget for the relocation to Volet. Okay, yes. all right, that's good. The, the other thing was, um, the the meat processing facility. Yes, that's part of the movement too. Um, where is that now? The meat process facility is is up on the same track as as Volet. Mm -hmm. We uh, have identified the place in in Lapel, mm -hmm. in in the Lakai area. There is already uh, some administrative building, some building there. Okay. What we are doing is is we have concepts and drawings already for that and costings. What we'll be doing again is finalizing those, those drawings, concepts, um, verifying the, the bills of quantities, and then submitting that to the Department of Finance for consideration. So is, is it going to be dong sized or is it going to be the same you know, concept that it, had, it had is, before? It is, it is supposed the equipment is already there. Mm -hmm. It is viewed that the capacity or the throughput will be downsized, but yeah. the equipment will be used. The okay, throughput will okay, be downsized. Okay. Yes. Uh, so any time, timeline on that? The timeline on that is, is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice said. Um, we're again due for another break. Stay tuned. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop. As a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. 
St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. P.S. you talk about uh, the lowering of our food import bill. I knew, well, I know for a fact they have zeroed in on seven crops yes. that we, we should be able to grow. We have done that over the years, yes. so I don't think we should reinvent the wheel. Um, we need to create, create a dent. I mean, this import bill is too high. Mm -hmm. Um, we also uh, talk about agro-processing, which you mentioned, mentioned a while ago. Um, you also mention of the throughput with, with the, um, the, the MPF, you know. Um, so where, where do we go now? Because we have now the banana industry, which is also still on stream. Where is, are we at now? Because we are hearing, uh, you know, our market out there, you know, in the UK mm -hmm. is telling us, hey, we cannot accommodate. Yes. You know, um, the other markets, uh, there was a market that was identified, you know, um, in France, you know, um, there are other local and regional markets. Where are we with our banana industry? Okay. With bananas, we, we have a, a project called the Banana Productivi Productivity Improvement Project. And through that project, we've been able to increase the acreage of bananas almost double it since 2016. So yes. we now we in the region of uh, 1,400 plus acres of, of, of land and the banana cultivation. Wow. We have also doubled the number of farmers interested in uh, planting bananas now yes. from, from 200 to over 450 yeah. farmers yeah. now. So the prediction is by June, July 2016, we are going to move from somewhere within 6,000 boxes a week to 15,000 boxes a week. So that is our target for this year. And I think we are on stream All right. to meeting that target. Mm -hmm. We have provided the farmers post-tropical storm cook with inputs, fertilizer, etc., oil mm -hmm. for the black cigatoga. We've given them several rounds of, of fertilizer assistance, um, and we are on stream. We are giving them technical assistance in the field, helping them replant. So that is, that, is, that is doing well. Bananas are doing well in St. Lucia. As for the export market, we have had discussions, uh, the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Agriculture, with Winfresh, with regards to the export of our bananas to the UK market. Mm -hmm. And also we've indicated that we want to restart the discussions with the persons in the French market. So this year we will be pro pro pursuing that French market avenue to see how best we can, we can expand and export to the, to the UK, especially France. There is supposed to be a trade mission with the NFTO, Winfresh, the government, to the UK to see first hand with our partners, the, the large supermarket franchises and chains to see what, what is it that they really require from mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also in St. Lucia seeking for the BPIP project to get our farmers Global GAP certified, yes. mm -hmm. which is very important. To get to those markets, we need that certification. We mm -hmm. need to be Global GAP. More of our farmers need to be Global GAP certified. And that means having the proper facilities on, on your farming, farming land. Mm -hmm. So you must have the proper pack house model and structure. You must have the toilets. That's you must good. have the running water. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to get Global GAP, and through that project, we are, we are giving farmers assistance to build those pack houses and those facilities. So we are assisting the farming community in, in meeting that type of certification. So a lot is happening in, in bananas, and we expect a lot to continue to happen in that area. Uh, barring what you just said, but there's still, farmers are still concerned on ground, eh? as yes. far as the export, because I mean, they are given a quota, and if the ministry, through the, the banana mm -hmm. uh, productivity uh, project, they are increasing production, you know, Farmers need to know, hey, yes, but where am I going to sell? Yes. So that, that's, so that's one of the burning, burning issues that we, we have now. We have engaged Winfresh on, on expanding that, that 6,000 bucks a week quota. Yes. And we expect those, those engagements to be fruitful, as well as the expansion of the markets in the region and in the UK. Okay. Looking at all of the entities, looking at bananas, looking at vegetables, um, of course, even in the livestock um, unit, um, we still need to know exactly what we're doing. We need, we need to analyze. Um, we need to know exactly, for example, we bring in fertilizer. We need to know mm -hmm. that the NPK is, the, con the, the, the combination is there. Yes. You know, so right now, I have, I have, as we know, there is a diagnostic lab at Union. Tell us about this lab and where it's at now. 
The National Diagnostic Facility is about 60 to 70% 70, 70 complete. The lab, it, the lab itself is almost complete, but that, that is a two-story building. You have the, the lab at the bottom, mm -hmm. and then you have a second floor, which is to be office space. The lab itself is about 90% complete. All the offices have been painted, the fixtures and fittings. We need to now put the furniture in there and staff that facility. Okay. That is what's missing um, in that facility. The, the, the upper floor, it is virtually incomplete. It needs to be tile painted, plumbed, electricals need to be in there, ACs need to be in there. What, what we, have, we have received from the government of St. Lucia, about $3.9 million to finish that facility. Mm -hmm. And that is taking place in 2019 to finish that facility. Okay. When that is complete, as you correctly indicated, that we will, we will now have in that facility one staff, the, the expertise to sample and test plant and animal material that would help with pest control, disease control, um, strengthen our border protection, right. and also um, strengthen trade facilitation. Mm -hmm. that, that is what it will do when it is complete. Mm -hmm. We are now at the Department of Agriculture reviewing the plant health bill, a new plant health bill, and a new animal health bill, as well as a veterinary services bill. So these, these will also strengthen the legislation to ensure that in tandem with the facility that we have a thriving sector, that, that we can control the disease, we can regulate the pests, mm -hmm. um, and we can send the samples with confidence yes. on what, what's happening. Yes, well, just, just before we end, um, I just want to, to talk briefly about uh, our collaborants. I know we have ICA, we have um, CADI, we have the, the Taiwanese. Tell us about those, those collaborants. ICA, ICA has been providing tremendous support to the Department of Agriculture for, for decades now, and the cooperation is tremendous in, in all areas. Um, the technical assistance received by, by the, the persons there, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a wonderful partnership with ICA mm -hmm. and, and the work that they do. Cardi, I met with the, the, the newly appointed rep representative for Cardi in St. Lucia, and again, the support is overwhelming mm -hmm. in areas such as um, coconut, coconut research, yes. coconut research, even mm -hmm. cassava research. Right. Um, they, they due to help us with some work on sargassum as yes. as a possible solution for for nematodes. Right. Yes. So so yes. that that is important. That work with Cardi, Ika Cardi, the Taiwanese. Um, oh, the Taiwanese. Well, yes, our, tremendous. Our no, yes, yes, yes. We receive uh, under the food the food reduction import import. That's the short name we give it. Import mm -hmm. import project. The Taiwanese are, are giving us $2.7 million to that, wow. contribute to that. So we have equipment, we have human capital, mm -hmm. we have technical assistance. There's supposed to be some project coordination support. That's a lot. So uh, they're giving us a lot. So it's about, it's over three years, so it's about almost a million, a million dollars a year. So. Well, Mr. Pierce, we, are, we end, you know. <laughs> I want to thank you for being here. You know, and I hope everything goes well for us. I think we are well on our way, honestly. I think a lot, a lot is happening in the ministry. A lot has happened last year in our, in our you know, year in review. We have seen it. So thank you again for being here. And I'm looking forward for more, seeing you more here again, you know, in the future. Thank you again. You've been watching Agriculture on the Move. I want to thank you, the viewers, for viewing. I was speaking with our newly uh, appointed peers, Mr. Barry Murphy, this year. I want to thank you. Continue to support us. Remember, agriculture is our business. And eat fresh. St. Lucia's best. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.